Hello everyone, it's Azim. We are looking at two different models of compact bone. Well, it's actually more than compact bone, as we'll see. So let's take a look at this model first. What we're looking at, here's the outside of bone. Um, this is the periosteum. And the periosteum is actually made up of two separate layers. The very outside of periosteum, that's the fibrous protective part. It's dense regular. Think of this as a bone sheath. This inner layer of periosteum, this is an osteogenic layer. This is where you'd find osteoblasts, the ones that build bone. So here's our periosteum, protective outer layer, dense regular, growing inner layer with osteoblasts. All these circular, whole circular structures that you see, these are osteons. When you look at bone in a cross section, you can see osteons as circles. When you see bone in longitudinal section, they're more like columns. So it just depends on how we look at it. Because of this columnar arrangement, that means bone is great, this compact bone is great at, as, at uh, withstanding stress in this vertical direction, this longitudinal direction, but not great at withstanding stress in a per perpendicular orthogonal direction. Each osteon at the center has blood vessels and nerves running through it. This hole, this hole is the central canal. You can see the central canal here too. You'll notice that there are a bunch of rings within one large osteon. Each ring is called a lamella. A lamella is made up of extracellular matrix, calcium phosphate and collagen, and has cells, and these cells are osteocytes. So you find osteoblasts out in the periosteum or also in the endosteum, and we'll get to that later. Osteocytes are always found within lacunae. Lacunae are these holes here. So you can see a lacuna with an osteocyte, lacuna with an osteocyte, lacuna with an osteocyte. There's a ton of them. The tiny, tiny little marks that are extending out from each lacuna, those are called canaliculi. We have blood vessels running through each osteon in each center, but how do we get blood to each individual cell? These cells have to survive and get nourishment. The bone is way too dense for things to just diffuse through, so you need little canals, canaliculi, for blood vessels, tiny capillaries, to fit through. When we look at bone also in this cross section, we can see our central canal, but sometimes we see blood vessels and nerves running horizontally. If it's going horizontally, that's a perforating canal. Perforating canal. From a side view, longitudinal cut, central canal, perforating canal. Because we want to give nourishment to the entire bone. Because bone is a living, t living and changing tissue. <clears throat> Periosteum, compact bone. Here's the beginning of spongy bone. You can see the trabeculae of spongy bone. You can see the osteocytes in their lacunae, surrounded by extracellular matrix, just like here in compact bone. It's just organized in branches rather than all compact. We have marrow in between. If we're at the end of the bone, the epiphysis, we're assuming this is red. If we're in the diaphysis, we're assuming this is yellow. This lining though, this is an endosteum, which is where you can also find osteoblasts. You can find osteoblasts lining in the endosteum. This model is a blow up of just one of these osteons. So if this is one osteon, here's another single osteon, but bigger. So here's our central canal with blood vessels, nerves, lymph, Osteocytes within lacunae. I guess this is a lacuna because it's an actual physical hole. You can see osteocytes here with canaliculi. Canaliculi extending lamella, that's a single layer. Central canal. There's no perforating canal in this one since it's um, only showing one osteon. But this is our cross-sectional view. 
This is our longitudinal view, showing the spaces, the lacunae, and showing the actual ostracites filling those spaces.